you want to obtain a sample to estimate a population proportion. Based on previous evidence, you believe the population proportion is approximately 28%. You would like to be 99.5% confident that your estimate is within 3% of the true population proportion. How large of a sample is required? So to answer this, you'll want to go to your formula packet and look up the formula on this page right here. It's down at the bottom. And you'll want to use the one where it says sample size determination. There's one for the mean. We're not doing a mean, right? We're doing it for a proportion, it says right here. So we want the one over here that says for proportion. And we know we have from previous evidence a P, so we want to use this one. All right, so what do we need for this formula? Let's start with the easier items to identify. We're going to want a P and a Q and a margin of error. So P, from previous evidence, we think it's 28%, so 0.28. Now P is the proportion of favorable outcomes. Q is the proportion of unfavorable outcomes. So it's one minus P. And then E is the margin of error. And it says here that we want our estimate, estimate to be within 3% of the true population proportion. So that's our margin of error, 0.03. Sometimes you may see this abbreviated in different ways, like ME or the error bound, different things, but we'll just keep it E to be consistent with this formula. And so we're only missing one piece, and that's the Z alpha half squared. So a short way to name that is the critical value, and it is a Z score, which means it's a standardized value from the standard normal distribution. You can look it up in the Z table, but you're going to need to go through a few steps to know which Z score to use. You'll want your confidence level, which is given in the problem here as 99.5%. So as a decimal, that's 0.995. Then you'll want to extract from that your alpha, which is the area in the tails under the normal curve. So that would be one minus the confidence level. And since we do confidence intervals with two tails, we want to split that up so that we have half of that amount in each tail. So half of alpha is 0 0.0025. Now we'll calculate the z-score. So you can either look it up in the table using an area of 0 0.0025 and just use the positive version of whatever z-score you find. Or in Excel, you can do absolute value to keep everything positive and use the norm.inverse function. First, you want to add the probability, comma, the mean for z-scores is always 0. The standard deviation for z-scores is always 1 and then close off all your parentheses and press enter. And I want to point out that it says, do not round mid-calculation. However, use a critical value accurate to three decimal places. So let's go ahead and round this to 2.807. That was the one thing that we're supposed to round is the critical value. Now we have all the parts that we need for our formula. Okay, so we need, let's highlight the stuff that's going to go into the formula. The P, the Q, the E, and the Z. So now I'll calculate N over here. So I'm going to just follow the calculation. In the top of my fraction, I'm going to have a set of parentheses for both the top and the bottom of my fraction. In the top part, I want z squared, so that's 
get inside the parentheses and then click on the z squared to the power of 2. Then I want to do times p and times q. So times p times q. Now in the bottom, inside the other set of parentheses, I'm just going to do e squared. So I'm going to click on my e and raise it to the power of 2. And remember that we always, always round up when we're estimating a sample size. Since you can collect 17, or rather 1,765 pieces of information, you can also collect 1,764 pieces of information, but you cannot collect 1,764.952 pieces of information, right? So rather than rounding down and not having enough, we always round up, even if normally mathematical rounding would tell you to round down, not when it comes to n. You always go up to the next number. So that's the answer for that. Let's try it out. And that's that.